Hey guys, Kyle R19 from the uh, Saddle Hunter Forum. Um, wanted to give you guys a quick update on the JX3 Hybrid. I know there's been some questions about uh, how to use this thing without a backpack. Uh, I did a video back in October before a hunt there and I just showed a quick video, everything I was bringing with me in the woods. Uh, I didn't have a backpack, it worked great. I went in maybe a mile deep on some rough terrain and uh, you know, it was a little over two miles both ways. Um, everything that I had on me that you saw in that video worked fine, didn't didn't catch on anything, it worked great. Uh, got to my tree, pulled my wild edge steps out, climbed up, did my thing, climbed down and got out of there, never used a backpack, never, nothing ever had to touch the ground, it was perfect. Um, but I wanted to give you a quick rundown. I did some more time thinking about it, what you know maybe some more people use, and, and it's modified a little bit, so I'll go through that with you guys. Uh, go ahead and get a little uh, sipping going on here while we're talking. Uh, I'll probably do a part two of this to kind of talk about the the hybrid in a little more detail, how I use it to hunt, things like that, Some tips, tricks, things. Maybe I'll do it out at the tree, um, give a little a little info there. But this, I just wanted to go over how to use this thing without a backpack of any sort. Um, obviously. Not everybody's the same. We use different stuff, but I'll just go through this with you and give you an idea of, of how much stuff you really can pack on yourself in this thing without it being too much of a hassle. Cheers. All right. So I am uh, ready to go here. And it looks a little busy up front, but honestly, it's not so bad. Uh, I'm just going to kind of start taking everything off and going through it with you. This is how I would be set up to, uh, to go in and make a typical hunt. Basically anything under, I'd say, you know, up or anything above 50 degrees. If it got any cooler than that, I'd have a few more layers. I'd have an extra layer of pants and I'd be getting dressed at my tree to hunt. But I'm just basically in a, a pair of pants and a base layer now and then I've got a, a second sweater to throw up on top. Uh, all right, so I'd be walking in, I'd have my headlamp. Hat if I want it. Walkie talkie, I like to carry a walkie talkie um, especially when I'm hunting by myself. It's obviously nice if you got partners, um, but if I'm hunting by myself, I keep one in my truck on, uh, just in case I don't have phone service or my phone breaks or dies or whatever. If something happens to me, somebody can get to my truck, they can get a hold of me, uh, especially when I'm really remote. It's just a nice little backup. Stay safe out there, guys, if you uh, make sure somebody knows where you're at and make sure they have a way to get to you. All right, uh, grunt tube. Got my milkweed, and you'll see here uh, I've got a small binocular pouch that is attached to the right side of this harness. And when I do the second part of this video in the tree, you'll see it kind of set up. But basically, as I'm sitting in the in the hybrid, this is unzipped and open on my side. It's nice and tucked in close to me. I keep phone, snacks, whatever the case may be, in there once I'm up there. But while I'm walking in, um, especially for this demonstration. I'll show you. Uh, got the new tree hopper drill and my carbon and titanium bolts. So those pack nicely right there. Got that. And then also in here, uh, which I'll take out for, for right now, charging brick for my phone and phone cord. Uh, and there was there was enough room to stuff some other accessories and things in there if I wanted to. But that would go there. And then, like I said, when I'm climbing, once the drill and bolts come out, um, stuff in my pockets, release, phone, wallet, whatever, I can now put in here because that's where I'll be using it in the tree. Um, okay, and then across my chest you'll see I've got the, the right side of the harness. I've actually got a clip um, across here to keep that tight. So normally you'd be climbing with the bridge hooked up uh, and then I just tuck it in my, my waist belt or whatever while I'm climbing until I get to height. But for walking through the woods you don't want all that flopping around. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, all right, so this idea is thanks to our dear friend Nutterbuster, um, the Allen Ammo Belt. Give me a second here, I'll get this put on. Um, just goes across the, the sternum strap. I've actually got this loop a little tighter for a different setup. There we go. Got that good to go. Another Nutter Buster winner of an idea, the magnet right there. Um, and then on the hybrid, it's got this little elastic loop. 
I can just set it there, you know, while I'm getting ready to climb or whatever, but I use the magnet as I'm climbing. So we're ready to go up the tree. Tether, lineman's belt, ring of steps. I'm ready to go. Um, I've got here, as you can see, it doesn't take too much effort, an extra layer. So as I was climbing, obviously I don't want it in the back because when I'm going to fold down, it wouldn't be in place there. So I can shove this behind me. It actually works really good. You can shove it in there behind the rods. I can shove it in my back. I can tie it around my waist. Any number of ways I can put it on. If it's cool enough that I can wear it while I'm climbing, you know, you've got lots of different options on how to put that on. All right. Um, so this would be me ready to go. Um, leg straps you can see are behind it. I'd simply drop, drop those and you can see the hook that Mr. John did. The back stays up. It's ready to go. I pull those between my legs, strap up. I'm ready to climb. Uh, you know, obviously I took all this stuff off, but I could literally walk straight up to the tree, pull that jacket out, slide it in here wherever I need it to go, and, and I'm good to go. I can begin climbing. I don't have to put it down on the ground. It doesn't unfold. Nothing falls out. It's ready to rock. All right, so now I'm going to, I got a few extra things on the the hybrid in my pockets, I'll kind of go through and get all that, get all that taken out. Tether. I've just got this on with a gear tie around the waist strap. Um, if you take a little time, do the strap really tight around your steps, throw that on there. It actually works really good. It's a nice place to put it. It's handy. It's easy to get to. All right. I've got my lineman belt permanently detached, so I won't be pulling it off. Uh, let's see here. Make a little room. All right. Okay. Time out. All right, as you can see here, you see this water, water bottle strap on this corner. I've got it shoved in one of the seat straps back here so it doesn't flap around when I'm walking. When I pick up just a little on the seat and fold out, it's gonna pop right out. So as I fold down the seat to sit down, you can see obviously this is flopping around, but you're talking a total of about 30 seconds to a minute. Um, the gear tie holds it really good. It doesn't move around a whole lot. Um, once I get sitting down, I'll either put in my, uh, my drink holder or whatever, however I'm going to have that bottle of water. I can just pull it around over my shoulder, undo the twist tie there, and, and now I've got it good to go. So you can see the bottle of water. We'll go ahead and take that off. <clears throat> The pouch I discussed earlier is there on my side. Here on the back of it, you can see my thermostat is in uh, the front brace here that when you're using it as a ground chair, it fits perfectly in there. I've got a small strap that's uh, tied around the fork so it can't move around. You know, once I'm up in the tree, I just loosen and slide the fork out and it stays permanently attached. Keeps my thermostat right there. Right between my legs is the perfect place for it. Nice, easy way to use that. I've got my knife strapped on here and then I've got my Doyle's uh, boat hoist. Those are permanently attached, or not permanently attached, but they're clipped onto the seat strap. And they're on the bottom side, so when you're sitting down, there's no pressure. You don't feel them on there. Nice and easy. All right. Toilet paper licenses, anything I need to keep waterproof, I keep in a bag back here. Um, five hour energy. This is a 50 pound plastic ice bag, and then I've got my blue gloves in there. If I kill a deer, I'll debone put them in here. Um, I've got another bag sewn for that purpose, uh, but I found that this is just too easy. Um, if I shoot a deer, I can debone it, put it in here. I've done another video that you can check back on with the straps. You see how I strap it into the back of the frame to, to pack a deer out. Um, I use either that game bag that I've got sewn that you can see in that October video, or I use this. This is just a little more compact. If I'm hunting Midwest and the chance of taking 200, 250 pound deer, I may bring two, but this thing will take uh, really any deer up to about 190, 200 pounds deboned. I can fit everything in one of these bags. Rolls up nice, goes down in here. Put granola bars, extra bottle of water, whatever you want to put in here. Um, depending on how big you are, how, you know, how much you're dealing with. As long as it doesn't take up a, too much space or poke you in the back, you'll, you'll see once you get your hands on it, there's a lot of room in there to put little small stuff. I'd say stuff that you're not using on your hunt, obviously. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to have to be fidgeting around reaching behind you, but to get out in the woods, like I said, I don't typically eat if I'm in the tree for three, four hours, but I always bring a granola bar in case I get stuck, lost, whatever the case may be, I've got a little extra. I keep a, uh, 
continuous loop, a sling, and an extra carabiner that just stays on there. It's got me out of a pinch a time or two. So that's pretty much that's pretty much it there. Uh, go ahead and set this down. And then you're going to be wearing pants with pockets. So key, wallet, GoPro head strap. You guys are on the GoPro right now. Uh, I've got it on a clip that I keep on my sternum strap that you're on now. And then whenever I get to the tree, if I want to switch over, I'll put you on the head strap. Sock cap, gloves. Uh, this is a screw-in drink holder. These work great, uh, obviously for bottled water. Even if you're not on, if you don't have a bunch of water, you're on, you know, short hunt or you hunt private land, close walk, whatever the case may be. You put this in front of you. It's great for phone, grunt call, accessories, things like that. Uh, and then an extra bow holder. If I don't use the one on the side of the hybrid, sometimes if I want to stand for a while, that bow holder is not great for standing up. So you either hold your bow, or I keep that just to put one on the tree, and release. All right. So, another timeout. I just want to do a, a quick recap. So, still on the hybrid thermocell, bow hoist, knife, um, alignment belt, and that's it that's on there. So, here's all the stuff that came with me in the woods bottle of water, five hour energy, game bag for packing out game, toilet paper, licenses, charging brick, foam cord. Um, drink holder, screw and bow holder, release, head strap for the GoPro, wallet, keys, gloves, hat, drill, rods, tether, grunt call, milkweed, a hat, flashlight. That's another thing that I didn't have in there right now. I've actually got it in another setup. I always keep a second flashlight with me. Um, that goes perfectly in that back little compartment there in the seat. Ring of steps. And a second light. And walkie-talkie. All of that with no backpack. Um, as you can see, look, there's a little stuff hanging off of you, but it's really not that big of a deal. Um, if I get a little more stuff, or if I'm going through really heavy cover, and I need a, I just need to build a little bit more uh, compact, stuff not moving around, whatever the case may be, um, you can use a fanny pack or I've got this. It's just a, an accessory pouch That's got the two straps on the back side of it I actually use this to carry my digital camera in whenever I'm filming um, But when I'm not filming this works great to take any of the stuff that was hanging an extra bottle of water Sandwiches snacks things like that. I can put in there clip it on the waist belt and then when I'm up at height I can hook up that uh, That screw and drink holder and just put one of the straps through it hangs right under it. It's perfect It's right right there in front of me um, like I said, I typically don't bring it uh, on, a, on a hunt like this. This is this is everything I need. There's no need for it, but it is a way to get a little extra on you. So these this pouch and that bino pouch are roughly the same size. Um, if you wanted to carry a rangefinder, that this is pretty much my limit. I don't carry a rangefinder anymore. But beyond what you see here, if I needed to add that or add anything else, I'd have to start carrying something. So again, you can use a backpack with the JX3. You can shove it in between. You can get to the tree, take it down, do whatever you need to do. Another thing that works great are the, just the little drawstring backpacks like the, the Kite or the Kestrel come in. Um, that, that style, it does it, it weighs maybe an ounce or two, but you can get maybe a layer or an extra bottle of water sandwich, something like that in there, and get it all loaded up. But as you can see, I've got everything here to hunt with the exception of my bow. Uh, I'm ready to go. There's no extra weight of a backpack. It all packs right on there. Uh, you can check back in that video in October where I climbed with the Wild Edge Steps. You can see how they slide in and out. Uh, you simply get to your spot, pull them out the side, put them over your shoulder and climb. When you get down to the base of the tree, um, same deal, slide them in there and, and you're good to go. Um, you, sh you should never have anything touching the ground at that point. So very easy to do with the bolts or rods, but also easy to do with the wild edge steps. If you're using sticks, I'd recommend just you know, using gear ties to hook them up to the bottom of it so that you don't have to take it off. Uh, I think that's it guys. I appreciate you watching. I'll do a second part of this soon, hopefully, and uh, show you getting in the tree, kind of getting set up with all of this. Thanks guys.